okay, so you've decided you need to change an outlet. Whatever the reason, maybe it sparks when you plug something into it, regardless of what you plug into it. Maybe it's not working at all. Maybe one of them's working, but the other one isn't. Maybe it's actually physically broken. That happens all the time. It's got something stuck in it, something like that. It only takes a minute to change these out, and there's no reason to be afraid of it. Uh, I'll show you the basic principles, and you can tackle it in your own home. We're going to start by making sure the power is disconnected. This little device here will not only tell us if it's wired properly, if it is, but it'll also tell us we can verify the power is off later, or we can use a volt tick like this to double check it. Right now the power is on. That should not beep when it's off. If you're having a problem finding the breaker for it, this tool right here will help you find the breaker. You simply plug it in. You'll see the light come on if it's powered on, if the outlet's not totally defective. Then you can go to your breaker box with this tool and it will help you show exactly which one to turn off so you don't have to turn off the whole house. I've got a few basic tools that I use for the majority of my electrical repairs. I've obviously got a wiring source book handy just in case I need to check something. We're not going to for this, but you get the idea. Now, you start by turning off the power. We're going to turn it off like this. Look at that. Work like a champ. No power. We should be good to go. We'll take this cover off and get this outlet swapped out. Now, a swap like this really doesn't take long. It's a pretty simple procedure. The only challenges you may want to watch out for is if there's any breakage of the wires and the connections. Now I'm going to use a power tool to undo the screws. You can do them by hand, obviously. They're a little long. When you put them back in, if you use a power tool, be careful. Maybe do it by hand the last couple of threads so you don't uh, crimp the plates that the screws go through. This is pretty much the only part of an electrical application where you could use a power tool to either screw something in or unscrew it. Um, electrical components are kind of sensitive, so you never want to use them on any of the uh, wire securing screws or anything like that. Now, once you've got those loose, you can pull those out and take a look at what's happening. We've got our hot coming in on the gold. We've got our ground over here. It's green in color. We've got the neutral coming to the white. The back of the outlets are also labeled white and black or white and hot, sometimes neutral and hot, but they're all labeled. You can see, hopefully, these small holes. Can you guys see those? By my finger? Those small holes are for inserting the wires into a push kind of clamp type system. I rarely, if ever, use those, and they're only good for 14 gauge. So if it's by chance a 12 gauge for some reason, your wiring, it won't fit in there anyways. I'm a big fan of the screws. Now, just to be sure I'm not going to light myself up, I'm going to use the volt tick to double check the voltage, make sure there, are, there is none. Now it's as simple as setting free the hot, neutral, and ground wires and resetting them on the new one. If they are pushed in these holes back here, you will need a small bladed screwdriver to insert right there. That takes the pressure off the clamp and allows you to pull the wire directly out. If they're wrapped around the screw like this, Sometimes it'll take a little work, but for the most part, they should come right off like that. And as long as we don't see any damage up against the insulation or any place else that makes us think that wire is prone to breakage, then it can be reinstalled just like it is. You don't have to strip down a fresh section or anything. Loosening the ground, screw, and now the neutral. Now you'll notice these were installed properly. The wire wraps clockwise around that. That way as the screw tightens, it actually grabs a hold of the wire and helps hold it in place. If it was wrapped counterclockwise, as you turn the screw, it would try and push the wire back out that side. So basically, we're gonna reinstall this guy just like it was, make sure it's good and ready, and run a solid test on it, be good to go. More out of habit than anything else, I'm going to install the ground first. Once again, I'm just trying to lock the wire in there. There's a small tab that you can put the wire up against and pry it around like so. You can see I'm putting a little bit of tension on the wires, and that's okay as long as they're in good shape. You should wait till you see a, an electrician in your house working on something like this. They're not shy about that at all. They got places to go. 
Okay, we've got that neutral back in place. We're going to tighten that up. Now, on the rare occasion that the top and, and bottom outlets have been separated somehow, they do that by cutting that small gold bar. Can you guys see that? Yeah? That small gold bar right there. I'll point at it with the screwdriver. By clipping that with a set of wire cutters on both sides, then you have to run separate source and neutral lines, hot and neutral lines to each side. And that allows one to be operated separately from the other, maybe by a switch or by a set of switches, so that just that outlet is operated by a switch. And we're going to roll it around, get this hot put in place. There it is. Now, because these are not clipped, it doesn't matter which screw I put it on. As a matter of fact, if we were going from one outlet to another with the same power, your next outlet, its wires would run off these other screws so that they're piggybacked together. So if you get your cover off and your outlet out and it's got four wires on it, pay attention to how the wires are installed. Maybe take a picture, which wire goes to which one. A small drawing might help just to make sure you get them back in the same location. Okay, now I'm basically just going to kind of fold the wires to get them to cooperate with me. That can be the biggest challenge sometimes is getting stuff to fit back in the outlet cover. I'm going to get these started. I'll finish them up with the drill and do the final couple of threads by hand to make sure I don't strip the holes out. Get the cover back on, run a test, and we should be good. trying to get the outlet nice and straight and tight enough to not move around but not so tight as to misshape it. Grab the outlet cover. Come on little buddy, you can cooperate. I get this question all the time by the way now that I'm standing here looking at it. Does the ground hole go on the top like this or on the bottom like it is here and the truth is codes has no requirement for either one now growing up in Southern California working on job sites there we would put them primarily like this and we would flip one upside down if it was controlled by a switch so that when you walked in a room and looked around you knew which one was controlled by the wall switch but in general what I've discovered here in Tennessee and mostly in the south is that they're usually the other way but not always, it just depends on the electrician. I can't think of a reason why installing them one way or another would make a difference, and codes doesn't care. So uh, be careful, make sure your power is turned off before you tackle a project like this. And when you're all finished up, you could turn the power back on like, there we go, look. Apparently it was being turned back on magically by the electric fairies while I plugged the tester in. So it's all good. It looks like based on the lights and the pattern of the lights, what you're looking for, that that's installed properly and working properly. And that's all it takes to get that outlet swapped. Now go get your outlet switched out. I'm guessing it won't take anywhere near as long as it just took me. So you have plenty of time to go do something fun. Have a great day.